Call the meeting to order. Welcome to the ranch and officially to fall, which feels more like winter at the moment where I'm sitting in Shasta County, about 220 miles from you. Hopefully all the fires have died down in um, all over California and Colorado and Oregon particularly. Rain is due this weekend, so let's hope we get some. I don't know about you, but I can breathe a lot easier without all the smoke and relax without the associated threats to our homes and communities. COVID-19 is still with us, so take precautions you feel are necessary to stay safe. To my knowledge, nobody has contacted COVID in our guild. So keep up the good work, as because I want all of you to stay safe and healthy. We did lose a dear member a couple of weeks ago, Eston Alton. Eston was a member of our guild since 1998, and I always look forward to seeing her beautiful machine embroidery pieces. She was a very nice lady. Thank you, Kay Hartman, for letting us know about Esther. A huge thank you to Joni Bellinghausen, Betty Upchurch, and Ann Nolan for the wonderful mystery quilt workshop that was held one week ago today. I I've been seeing several of your pieces up on behind your board, so that's great that you're showing them off. Looks like Sue is and Barbara is, and raise your hand if you're showing yours. Great. Um, there were 43 participants in that workshop, which I thought was amazing. There's also, um, uh, and that was an extremely amount, large amount of participants being on Zoom. And I heard it worked really well. I'm looking forward to seeing all those beautiful quilts. You can still make one or more um, as the instructions are on the srqg.org website. So hopefully we'll see some nice show and tell. A few of our members who tried to join our meeting last month after we started weren't able to link to the meeting. This issue has been investigated by our Zoom committee and they discovered that while the um, videos were being played, they could not see anyone attempting to log in. But our Zoomster and Nolan found a way to stop that from happening. So you should be able to log in at any time during a meeting. Yahoo! Old business. Ann Nolan completed the voting tool, which will be sent to every member of our guild asking for approval of three items right after today's meeting. So look for a message from Sharon telling you about it, and then you're going to be receiving them via email. And the three items were an additional $800 for community quilts budget for this year, for batting and backing for fire quilts. They have a lot of tops coming in, but they really need the additional materials. Um, the second one was the expense to fund $65 per month for Zoom um, for an unlimited number of meetings of Zoom for up to 500 people until we meet again in person. And so that's quite a big trade-off from having to pay for the vet's hall. Uh, but it came to over $350. So we needed guild approval for that. And then approval of the 2021 Santa Rosa Quilt Guild budget. So watch for the, the newsletters this morning or after this meeting and the voting tool. And please try to get it done within a week. It only takes about a minute to do it's three questions. You can say yes, no, or, or abstain from voting. Uh, let's see, a few of you have asked why some meetings are recorded and displayed on our website and others are not. We record most of our meetings, but not speaker meetings and speaker workshops, unless the speaker gives us permission. You've got to remember, this is how they make their living. And if everybody could come onto our website and find somebody's workshop, they could use it and it wouldn't be fair. And the other is board meeting minutes. Our board meeting um, minutes are taken and they're, they're kept, legally kept um, as a paper copy and also on a separate file. But all of our regular meetings are recorded 
excuse me, the minutes are available and they are recorded so you can look at them online. And one thing about our speakers, you may not know, a lot of times I'll have a great speaker and you're going, boy, I wish that I knew more about her or just go onto her website or his website and check it out and see if they have a free pattern. Sometimes they have free patterns or free videos. And I think that's really helpful too. And by the way, board meetings are open to anybody who wants to view them, but we only call upon the board members to speak during a board member. Otherwise it would become you know, a very, very long meeting. So if you have anything you're concerned about um, or you want us to discuss at the board meeting, just talk to any one of your board members and or send a message to me. Oh, I'm Janelle Voorhees, in case you didn't know. Um, and we'll discuss it. But don't forget, we also have sew and, show, sew and tell items, excuse me, show and tell items, sew a rose, block of the month, newsletters, and so forth on our website. So that's really handy if you want to go back. I love the feature of the archive on the um, show and tell page. If you go to the very bottom of the page, click on archive, you can type in a person's name and just press the go button and it will pull up any, anything that they have shown that they've agreed to share with us. And it's kind of nice. I, um, I know if you noticed it in the newsletter, Jim Jensen found a quilt of mine from several years ago I'd forgotten about and he put it right on the front page of the newsletter. So it is handy. Say, so, okay, so let's go into election of officers. It'll take place December 5th during our holiday meeting. We will invite you to wear your best holiday sweater, your, your best holiday outfit, hat, whatever. Da, da, da. Um, you did notice that I got a little bit of uh, K facet on here. Um, or you can show us your holiday baking cookies or whatever, but we'll send out a lot more information about that. But it'd be really fun to look at everybody and see them in their, their great sweaters or I know I've got a sweater, uh, a sweater dress that I wore last year that was hilarious, and so did Jan Nielsen, our vice president. Speaking of our election of officers, Ann Nolan retires as program chair in December, and Bonnie Butler Savald graduates from program chair elect program chair in 2021. We are in need of a program chair elect for 2021 to line up the programs and then become the program chair in 2022. So all of the um, investigating of who people would really be interested in seeing and going to it, the NCQC, the Northern California Quilting Conference or Council, you can even attend their meetings on Zoom and they have guest speakers. There are a lot of places you can find guest speakers and that would be done in 2021 and then the actual um, programs would happen in 2022. I've done it. Joni Bellinghausen's done it. Ann Nolan's done it. There's a bunch of us who have done it. And so there's a lot of expertise. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, we do have a pink binder. We'd be more than happy to share with you. And every time Laura Barrett is sews and puts her arm up, I think she's volunteering. <laughs> I can see her. <laughs> she's knitting. <laughs> Okay, um, so it's a wonderful way to meet the professionals in our craft and help our guild learn new skills and promote our mission of, and if all of you don't know our mission statement, our guild is dedicated to preserving this country's quilting heritage through the education and enhancement of quilt making skills. Our members have a love of quilting and all things quilt related and welcome those who have several, have similar interests. It's nice to go over that at least once a year. I think it's really important because everything we do in our guild is helping our community, whether it's making community quilts, fire quilts, just helping others. Some people volunteer in schools when the schools are open, it, it all helps. We're also a 501c3 um, IRS um, determined nonprofit organization. And as such, we have 
determination number, which is posted on the website in case anybody wants to make a donation. Some of you belong to organizations um, that are willing to give another organization to another nonprofit. So under new business, our guild received a very nice donation. I'll let Laura Barrett tell you about it. And please run the video from Laura Barrett. Okay. It'll be just a minute. Hello, my name is Laura Barrett, and I'm here today representing Community Quilts. And I'd like to introduce you to Dorothy Murray. Hello, Guild members. It's good to see you. And I hope we can in the near future. Uh, today, I wanted to tell you that we've been very fortunate to apply for a thriving financial grant uh, for the Guild in the amount of $250. Thrivent Financial is a Fortune 500 company and uh, one of its uh, main thrusts uh, besides financial well-being for its members uh, is to live generously. And as you can see, we're wearing Live Generously t-shirts today. And that's provided by Thrivent Financial. Anyway, um, the last few years, we've been able to get a grant for batting for the Quilt Guild um, at least once a year, and this year twice. And so uh, this $250 gift card is the second this year. So they've provided $500 worth of batting for the guild members to use for all of their community projects. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dorothy Murray, for making that happen. And thank you, Laura Barrett from Community Quilts. We really appreciate all those donations. You remember in the past many years how we filled up three large barrels of canned goods and an envelope of donation checks for the local food bank the past many years during our December luncheons. Um, our board discussed it and we would really love for everybody to host a reverse advent calendar urging us to collect canned goods each day for the Redwood Empire Food Bank. It was noted that the food bank ac accepts only cash or online donations or you can drop off your canned goods at um, various places around town, but Oliver's and Whole Foods in Santa Rosa both have bins. And this was brought up by um, Carol Belkey. I thought that was a really, really nice thought was calling it a reverse advent calendar. We are collecting all month long. So the need is greater than normal. And since we're not meeting in person, please, please do, you know, do it yourself to help your community. And if you're more interested in what types of canned goods are needed, it was listed in the November, December newsletter. So read all about it. So we'll go on to committee reports. Block of the month with Carol Lemoyne. And please run Carol's block of the month report, her bomb report. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol Lemonier. I'm a member of the Committee on Block of the Month, and this is a committee report for November. I've got my roasting pan here because guess what you're going to be doing in Thanksgiving, hopefully, is roasting a turkey. And guess what you're going to be doing for the Block of the Month for November? A turkey. So I thought I would take this time to tell you how to make the turkey block. 
I'll show you the block first and then I'll go through it very quickly. And then of course the instructions will be on our website. The block is a beautiful turkey block. It has a head, a neck, and a bottom body. And then it has a scrap, scrappy feathers. So let me go through the steps with you since you're here. First, you need your ingredients to dress your turkey. You need a eight, three and a half inch blocks for the background. You need an eight and a half and a seven and a half strip. You need two, two and a half inch, one and a half inch square. This little guy is one and a half by two. You need the top of the head, which is one and a half by three and a half, a two inch and a one inch square. To make your feathers and the body of the turkey, you need also eight scraps, uh, three and a half inches. You need your turkey body and you need your waddle or your weddle. The background should be light. The body should be dark. The scraps can be whatever you want. The only requirement is that the weddle or the waddle of the turkey should be red because we know turkeys are red. I don't know if turkeys are dark because the turkeys I see in the frozen aisle are all white, but let's just go with that. So the technique in making this block is the stitch, cu cut, and flip technique. And you only need to do that on the body to make the feathers, the head, and the bottom. To do the stitch, cut, and flip method, you, you draw, of course, a diagonal line, you sew it, you cut it, you flip it, and lo and behold, you have a half square triangle. On the head, you need the two inch square and the one inch square. So you got a funny looking head. See, there we go. And the turkey bottom, you need a one half inch square and then you flip them. Now, in the instructions, in the written instructions, it says, uh, so right to left, left to right, that doesn't mean anything. Just look at the picture and then you know you need to make the diagonal lines look like this. That's the most difficult part of the block. Thereafter, you need to put your waddles together with the background. Put those two together. You've got your four patch. Put them together. Sew them together. Add the neck, which is six and a half inch long. You add your turkey bottom with the background which is seven and a half inches long. And then come on over here. Here we've got the four patches together along with the neck. You got the bottom, whoops. I got this, no, I got, yeah, no, I got it right. Okay, you got the bottom with the background. You got your waddle together. And then now you can see how easily this goes together. Once you've put your neck and your waddle, your bottom together. Then you sew these three pieces together, add them to the body, do the top row, sew them all together, and lo and behold, you have dressed your turkey. You are ready for Thanksgiving. Make a lot of these and hopefully you'll win a lot more. Thank you. I don't know about you guys, but that was fabulous. <laughs> I don't think we should post that online. I think we should all do it from memory. Wouldn't that be fun to see what our turkeys end up looking like? <laughs> anyway, we'll be posted online. And thank you, Carol. That was great. I love the turkeys. I wonder if we can make them really small for pot holders. Wouldn't that be darling? Okay, let's move on to fire quilts with Laura Barrett. And please run Laura's report. So give us a few seconds.
Good morning. I'm Laura Barrett, and I'm with Community Quilts, and I'm here today to talk about our fire quilts. We've started giving out some of the fire quilts slowly as people are in a little bit semi-permanent places, and we've given out about two dozen between the different people who are making them themselves and some people have donated them and we've given those out also. So thank you everybody who has given tops and quilts for the fire quilt effort. If you would like to make a fire quilt yourself, the minimum size is 40 by 60, but it's better if it's bigger than that, but it doesn't have to uh, be bed size. Uh, let's see. We also have many tops that need to be quilted that can be given out as fire quilts. If you would like to get one of those, you can contact Janet Tonkin, myself, Laura Barrett, or Pam Beebe. We'll give you the top, the batting, and the backing, and we'll let you choose which one you like. So I want to show you a couple of the tops. So here's one. And this one is 54 by 68. And here's another one that someone donated. And this one is 52 by 66. So if either one of those speak to you, I have those at my house and I can get them to you with batting and backing. Um, Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is just to remind everybody where you can drop off quilts. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven drop off points. So we have two in Santa Rosa, that's myself, Laura Barrett, and Pam Beebe. And then in Oakmont, we have Janet Tonkin. In Sebastopol, we have Nancy Stedman. In Healdsburg, we have Heidi Mitterai. Nope, that's wrong. In Healdsburg, we have Margot Pitter. And in Sonoma, we have Heidi Mitterai. And in Rohnert Park, we have Sue Gregg. And all their contact information is on the roster. So you can get a hold of them and figure out how to drop them off. If you want it to be contactless, maybe you don't want to go in someone's house or for, you know, maybe you just don't want to have any personal contact. We all have boxes at our house and bins and just put it in a plastic bag and you can leave it or you can pick something up that way. Okay, everybody, we miss seeing you and we're looking forward to our in-person whenever that is. Bye-bye. Thank you, Laura. Let's move on. Um, community Quilts with Janet Tonkin. And please start the video. Hi, I'm Janet Tonkin from Community Quilts. Good to see everybody. Um, I wanted to thank all of you who have been um, getting tops and quilts to community quilts for our projects during this year, as well as starting to work on fire quilts. Um, I wanted to let you know that um, this year we have still been giving out quilts. So far they've gone to Valley of the Moon, um, Sutter NICU, um, Memorial NICU, the Emancipated Youth Pro Program, and um, Public Health has also taken some. So we really appreciate it. I'm collecting and working on the numbers for Valley of the Moon because next April we'll be here before we know it and we need 100 Valley of the Moon size quilts for that time. Um, so um, thank you again for all the creative ideas that you've come up with, the beautiful quilting. It's fun to see some of the new things we're learning on how to free motion quilt or quilt with rulers. So thank you very much. Thank you, Janet. That was very nice. 
you know, we're heading towards the end of the year and it's time to think about membership renewal. And um, Jan Andrews, are you willing to say something live? I certainly am. Good. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, we've sent out information via Sharon and the newsletter about membership renewal. And even though we aren't meeting in person, it is still just as important to be a member of our guild because of the reports you just heard, especially. And because we love our speakers and we're going to enjoy some Zoom workshops and hopefully soon we'll be able to see each other in person and if not hug we can at least elbow bump right well i already sent out a uh, memo by way of sharon showing you the goodies that linda super hooper has put together for us this year and um, this one is a really bright jelly roll of two and a half inch strips with a fiskars cutter and this I think this is the safety kind that shuts itself down automatically so you probably have less chance of mowing down your finger. This adorable thing, Vicki David, I'm speaking to you, is full of gorgeous fall and earth tone fabrics in a darling pot with a little tree of life charm and three white marking pencils. Linda made us a Christmas tree out of fabric. <laughs> and hiding behind it is one of the old school Olfa 45 millimeter cutters. And this is the kind of cutter with the straight handle that I learned on in the 90s. And it's still my favorite rotary cutter. Here we have some bright and darling fat quarters. I guess I should center that, right? And a lovely pair of embroidery scissors. Vicki David, we're talking to you again. Beautiful fall colors. A set of, I believe there are eight fat quarters here. And there's a cute tape measure hiding in the middle. And finally, a cute little canning jar that is full of K-facet charms in pinks and purples and a really cute tape measure as well. And how this is going to work is Jim Jensen picks up everything uh, that's mailed to the P.O. box and I'm going to meet with him um, and pick up everything that he has received as of today, just as if it were a regular meeting day. And then I will do what I normally do and post them all. And I will use my random number generator just as if we were having a regular meeting. And then when I pick two numbers, I'll notify the winners and they will be able to pick which of these they would like. And so I'll do two this time. I'll do two, um, I think our next meeting is November, 19th and then I'll do one at what would be our holiday luncheon and so uh, the sooner you pay the better your pickings are so I today's is basically closed because Jim went to the P.O. box uh, yesterday and so you still have chance for November 19th still so if you have any questions let me know and you can also mail them to my house if you want to several people have already done that and I just thank you all for uh, updating your roster information. I got quite a few emails from people who had updated information. And I really appreciate that too. And thank you. I miss you all. Thank you, Jan. That was very nice. Well, show and tell. Where was the prize for you today? Where's Linda Hooper? Raise your hand. Maybe. There she is. At the last board meeting, Vicki David asked, why don't we do a show and tell slideshow? And she said, that might be really great and it won't take much time. And it'll be fun to see everything and we'll still post it on the internet. So, so Linda Super Hooper 
has placed the latest show and tell items in the slideshow for us to view today. She got home yesterday from Mexico and she worked very hard on this slideshow last evening. So take it away, Linda. Ooh. Boy, some of you are getting a lot of stuff done. Thank you, Linda. That was just lovely. Didn't you all enjoy it? Thank you. That was worth, worth having. If you guys loved it, let us know and we'll continue doing that as long as Linda can continue doing it for us. It, we have one more surprise for you. Uh, we received such a wonderful response to our tour of sewing rooms that we're hoping to show one of one or two or three of them at each of our business meetings. We only have one tour today, but it's from somebody we haven't seen in a while because she moved to Penn Valley. So let's welcome Betsy Smith and see her new sewing room. Take it away, Anne. Uh, no. Hi, Santa Rosa Cole Guild, Betsy Smith here. I just wanted to show you what sold this house to us was this wonderful room that's now my crafts room. So in here, we have all my fabric and it's by either Halloween or Christmas or it's by color and sorted all the projects of all the quilt blocks and sew a rose that I've won. And as we keep going, this is my Zentangle area, that I was the class I was teaching, and my Mary Kay and my crafts books. Here's our, my long arm, and right now we're uh, working on the tension. These are a couple of things that I've worked on since I've been here before my surgery. So this is that uh, quilt where you put the pieces together. That's going to be for my sister as soon as I finish quilting it. This quilt was um, block of the month that I won last year, I do believe. And so I have to get ready to quilt that. And that will happen as soon as I can actually hold on to things better with this hand. I did have that surgery where they fixed the arthritis and it's going pretty well. I also used some of our quilt blocks to make table runners and moving along 
Here's our my scrapbook and pens, uh, acrylic painting, paper, tables. So I work sewing on this side and I do my paper craft on this side. Both of my machine, my tabletop machines are in for service since I can't sew at this moment. And then last but not least, is all my cooking and extra uh, cake decorating and all the kind of big kitchen stuff that doesn't fit inside the kitchen. So that's my crafts room. I hope that you like the tour and I do miss you all and wish that we could have meetings again. See you later, bye. Thank you, Betsy. She seems really happy in her new location and her hand is healing well. It's gonna take some time, a lot of time, but, but it's healing. So for the re remainder of November, we have a couple of big things coming up. November 10th is our library and more day from 11 to 1.30 at the storage facility. In the newsletter this month, there um, it, we have it very, heavily detailed exactly how to request books, how to return them. I will be there at, uh, at the event to help you get into the gateway and check you out again, but then you'll go around and pick up the books you want from Sharon. But there are other things you can drop off there. So please, please, please read the newsletter and that's on the website in case you haven't found it on the website yet. When you log into srqg.org, on the left hand menu bar, there's one, or it might be along the top, it says newsletter. And click on that and it'll bring up all the newsletters for the past few years. So it'll be the latest one. So make sure you read that. And that'll make Sharon and her group very, very happy to see all your faces. On November 19th, we have a speaker meeting, starts at 10 o'clock. And it'll be on Zoom. I'm going to let Ann Nolan introduce our guest speaker for no November 19th. Take it away, Ann. My name is Carol Zayogas. I am the owner of Kimono Momo. I have been sourcing and working with antique Japanese textiles since 2005 and frequently travel back and forth to Japan. My last trip was two weeks before the airports shut down and we couldn't leave the country anymore. So I'm here to talk a little bit about my collection, specifically pieces that come under the Boro and Sashko. Sashko being the stitch, Boro being what you make with that stitch. And I delight in showing people the variations of color and design and pattern in historical sashko as well as what you can do with modern sashko And we do have openings in the workshop. Right now we have 10 and we're allowed to have 20. So if you want to take the workshop, please sign up with Ann Nolan. Ann, do you want to say anything? Um, just wanted to uh, share that this is ideal for a Zoom class because she'll be able to give you close up views of the stitching and what you're going to learn. And um, as many as Many of you found out when we did the mystery quilt with Joni, it's a lot of fun to just be on Zoom and visit with people while you're working. Thank you, Ann. And then November 26th is Thanksgiving. So have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us today. I hope to see all of you at the speaker meeting on November 19th, but hope to see several of you on November 10th at the library. Um, stay tuned, even after I join, uh, join the meeting, stay, stay online, and guess what? 
and you'll be able to visit with other people in the guild. So thank you very, very much. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.